I've been working with dreams now for about 40 years and um, I understood much more about dreams uh, in the beginning than I do now. And um, as I said in this quote, um, I believe that we have to develop what, um, what Keats um, and, and much, of my, much of my stuff I steal from, from Jim Hillman, okay? And I'm not going to give any attribution, he didn't either. He was a big, large thief. He stole from everyone and he just put it together in his mercurial way, I'll do it in mine. So, um, uh, he, um, Keats said that we all have to develop negative capability. The ability to not know, to stay in not knowing. I think that if you approach a dream with a sense that you can know the dream, you put a barrier between you, uh, yourself and the dream that you will never overcome. Um, so I have over the years become uh, more or less a phenomenologist. So let me first uh, tell you what I mean by phenomenology because of course there are many kinds of phenomenologists. And phenomenologist goes from the point of view that you can get access to reality by way of experience, but it will always be partial access. You will never completely know reality, you will never completely know truth, because you're always looking at it from a perspective. You will never be able to inhabit all perspectives which would be necessary to know truth and to know reality. So. We can, always, we can have a partial access to reality through experience. And um, the way that, so that is the, the a priori that I start with, because some people like uh, Descartes would say that you can't get access to reality through experience, and he actually explains that by saying, well, what if I were now dreaming? I would still think that all this is happening and I am dreaming. So he then threw out experience and said we cannot get access to reality by way of experience, but I think that we can. And um, so the way that I look at dreams, and I must remind you that the work that I'm doing is um, not just with dreams, because the work, uh, this kind of work that I call embodied imagination, you can just as well do with memories, you can do it with symptoms, um, it is just that my, the paradigm where I start is dreaming. And um, so I take imagination from the point of view of dreaming. So um, just think back to the last dream that you can remember. When you think back to the last dream that you can remember, the first thing that you will notice is that you were somewhere and that something happened in that place. So, um, and this is true all over the world. Whenever you ask a person, what did you dream, they will always say, I was somewhere and something happened. So a dream is a somewhere where something happens. And um, in that place, you know that you're awake. So while dreaming, you know that you're awake. It is not that you think you're awake, you know that you're awake in the same way that you know that you're awake right now. There's a very, very small group of dreams that are called lucid dreams in which you know that you're dreaming, but I'm not going to talk about that. It is such a tiny little percentage of our dreaming. Even if you're very highly trained, even if you're a Tibetan monk, it's still a small part of your dreaming. The, your common dreams, you know that you're awake. And then as you wake up, that world evaporates. So it is not a physical world. At least I don't believe it is a physical world. I call it a quasi-physical world because it behaves as if it were physical. As you are in the dream, as you are surrounded by the dream, you are in a world that is apparently physical. It presents itself as physical and I call it therefore quasi-physical. Um, then there's the question of who is the dreamer? Um, well, in my model, um, the dreamer is, um, the word dreamer means nothing. I have no idea who the dreamer is. I don't know what produces dreams. I don't know if there is a subject to dreaming. I know nothing. I only know dreams. I don't know the dreamer. Um, so uh, 
because if people say, well, all the parts of the dreams are, of the dream is part of me, basically what you say is you're a Western individualist. <laughs> if you say um, all the dreams are part of processes that happen in the brain, then you say I'm a materialist. Um, uh, for instance, I, am, um, <clears throat> I lived for eight years in Australia and I had the privilege to work with some Aboriginal people there. And uh, so I was in the outback and um, was working, was camping with a group of tribal Aboriginal people of the Pitjantjara uh, tribe, of the Pitjantjara group. And uh, that is one of the groups in the center. There's several groups in the center. And um, so it's about, if you know Ayers Rock in the middle of Australia, Uluru. And so if you go and if you take a desert vehicle and you drive 13 hours mm -hmm. southwest of Ayers Rock, that's where I was in a little camp. And um, I uh, was asking people, as I do, what do you dream about? And one of the women, one of the elders said, well, I, we dream frequently about songs, songs and dances. And um, so I said, can you tell me a dream? She said, well, yeah, um, I dream.